Okay, so just like before in the previous video, this is a plot of the error uh, from the training algorithm as a function of the number of epochs that we have gone through the training data set. This is again for the 221 XOR network and data set. Um, and this one actually ended up converging, no problem, but there was a couple examples last time where this simply leveled off and nothing changed. Sometimes it would get caught later and I would actually find the solution. Um, and sometimes I would just be stuck. I would be stuck in a local minimum. So what I want to do is detect when this happens. And I want to, in that scenario, when I've seen that I'm sort of stuck like this, I'm going to randomize the weights uh, by adding a normally distributed random number to them uh, that is proportional to their size. So if I have a weight, a connective weight, let's say is like 100, I want to add a normally distributed random number um, with its standard distribution being chosen to be proportional to 100, right, to the size of the weight. So what I don't want to do is have a connective weight that's, you know, maybe 0 0.018 and then add 5 to it. <coughs> that could be that could be detrimental but if it's a hundred and I end up adding five to it you know maybe that's maybe that's good so I want it to be proportional to the size of the connective weight so to do that let's go back to our program here and let's go to the neural network class uh, backpropagation network methods and let's create a new public void method let's call it nudge all right has one parameter, it's a double called scalar. And this is what I'm gonna do. Well, I wanna go through all of the weights and biases and augment them, okay? So we need our original loop for chugging through all of the uh, weights and biases. So for int L equals zero, L is less than layer count, L plus plus, and for, and I'm gonna do a loop through j, which is all of the nodes on this layer first. So for int j equals zero, j is less than the layer size of the current layer, j plus plus. Um, first of all, let's nudge the weights, okay? So for int i equals zero, i is less than, well, it depends. If l is zero, then uh, input size, otherwise the layer size of the l minus first layer, just like that, i plus plus. Okay, so this is identical to the loops we did before. Now, um, first let's write down the double w which is going to be the weight for layer L connecting node I in the previous layer to node J in the current layer. <coughs> and I'm going to create a double called U and it's going to be a random uh, number. So I need to go to my Gaussian class. So Gaussian dot get random Gaussian. And what I want to do is I want to get a number that's proportional to the weight W that I just wrote down. Uh, but centered around zero, so I can add that onto the weight itself, okay? So let's get a random Gaussian. Uh, the mean can go ahead and just be zero. Uh, the standard deviation will be, well, W might be too much, so what we're gonna do is take W, which is the current weight, and multiply it by the scalar that you pass in, okay? So W times scalar, and that will sort of, uh, well, that should shrink and give you control over the standard deviation of the uh, of the distribution I want to pull this random number from and that will I mean long story short if the scalar is bigger the more I'm gonna adjust the weights you know most likely uh, the smaller it is the less I will okay so then weight of L I J plus equals u all right so that uh, will nudge this weight a little bit and while I'm here, I'm actually going to take the previous weight delta for L, I, J, 
and set it equal to zero. Okay. Now I want to do that just because I don't want uh, I don't want any any contribution from the previous pass through the training to still be present. I want to have zero as a momentum term, and I want to alter the weight and just let the algorithm take over and try and do gradient descent one more time. Uh, so that's how I'm going to blank that out. So those are the weights. Now let's nudge the bias. Um, so let's say double B equals the bias for this layer, no J. And double V equals Gaussian dot get random Gaussian. Again, centered around zero. And again, um, proportional to the bias this time. So B times scalar. Okay. So then bias of LJ plus equals V. And previous bias delta of LJ equals zero. All right, so that is the nudge method. So now, when do we want to call it? Well, let's go back to our network trainer. Go to our simple network trainer. And let's add some fields to sort of parameterize what's going to happen. So first, let me go back to Mathematica here and describe what I'm going to do. So the first thing I did is I wrote a method that computes the uh, linear regression of a segment of this error data. Uh, and it turns out it, it wasn't working super well uh, because what I was hoping to do was compute the slope, the average slope over maybe 100 iterations and ensure that it was negative. And when it was very near zero, I would nudge it and then hope it would continue on. Uh, but depending on how you cut up the data, it just bumps back and forth too much. So what I'm going to do instead is look at a window of data. So let's say between 200 and 300. Okay, so I have all of this, all this data in here. I'm going to look at the average value over that interval, and that'll give me an average error. Okay. Now, immediately following that is the interval from 300 to 400, right? Another window. Over that window, I'm again going to compute the error and look and see if the error here on the window from 200 to 300 is appreciably larger than the window or the error that I computed for the window immediately following that between 300 and 400. If that's not the case, then I'm going to nudge it. If it is, then I don't. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to set up a couple of parameters here for controlling when I want to nudge, and they're going to be public so that uh, you can set them up from outside the class. So public. Oh, what do I want to call it? So int nudge underscore window um, equals, well, I guess we'll default it to 100. Okay, now nudge window is going to be the length, uh, let's say, the, so the length of the window. So 200 to 300, right? That window is how many indices of the error history list I'm going to look at and compute the average over. Um, now I need some doubles to set up the rest of it. So nudge, oops, sorry, this needs to be public, public double nudge scale equals, I don't know, let's just set it to 0 0.25. I'll explain this in a second. And nudge tolerance equals 0 0.0001. Okay. Now nudge scale, this is just the number I'm going to pass into the nudge method from the network class. Right, so this can be adjusted from outside um, by the user. And then the tolerance is going to be uh, what I'm going to look for here. So if, let's say, between 200 and 300, I get some number. And between 300 and 400, I get another number. I'm going to look at, essentially, I'm going to look at the slope between um, the previous point and the following point over a distance that I will call well, it'll be the same as the window length, right? So consider it as being the center of the previous window, so 250, to the center of the following window, so 350. Um, and I will look at essentially rise over run and just look and see if that slope is essentially zero. So I'm going to check by looking to see if it's within the tolerance. And if it is, then I will call the nudge method, OK? So um, let's go ahead and do that. 
So what I want to do is slot in a method right here that lets me check whether to nudge. Okay. Um, so I need actually a method to call. And let me define that right here. So this is going to be a private method. And we will call it private void check nudge. Okay, and it will check if I want to nudge it or not. So uh, let's need, we'll need a couple of doubles here, uh, old average and new average. Um, I'm going to need an int, I'll just call it L, it's going to be the length of the error history list. Okay. Um, now, here's what I need to do. Um, first, I need to make sure I have enough data. So do I have enough data? So if um, iterations, that's the number of iterations I've gone through the algorithm, the number of epics. So if that is less than two times the nudge window, just return, okay? So I need two entire windows worth of data to check and see uh, to, to do the averages and compare. So if I don't, if I haven't even gotten that many iterations through, just don't do anything and, and bounce. Um, so now let's compute our averages, averages, and compare. Okay, so for int i equals zero, i is less than nudge window i plus plus. The old average is going to equal, oh, you know what? Sorry. Old average, I want to initialize it to zero. New average equals zero. Okay. I mean, I know they will be zero, but for completeness. Uh, old average plus equals error history of, well, where do I start? The old average needs to go from the length of the list minus two times uh, the window, sorry, nudge window, plus i, okay? And the new average plus equals error history of l minus nudge window plus i. Okay, so that's that. Now, old average um, divided by equals nudge window and new average divided by equals, whoops, nudge window. Okay, so now these are actually the averages. Um, so if, um, math dot absolute value of the new average, sorry, new average minus old average um, divided. So that's the uh, delta y over delta x, which is the length nudge window. So if that, sorry, is less than the nudge tolerance, then let's go bpn dot nudge. Oh, sorry, not bpn. Uh, network dot nudge by nudge scale. Okay. So that is the nudge uh, check nudge method, almost actually. So this is a difference of integers. This is an integer, so this is integer division, which is going to fail because it's going to end up being zero a lot. Um, so I actually need to cast this to a double first. Okay, so cast the entire math.absolute value of the difference to a double. That way the division works on doubles. Okay, so this, I'm almost out of time here. So I'll uh, break this up into two pieces and see you in a second.